Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of the Brain Discovery series. My name's Ellie, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Dr. Ned is going to be interviewing one of his patients. Her name is Sarah Barron. She's a former equestrian who unfortunately had to stop riding due to suffering too many concussions. In this interview, we're going to be focusing on the reason she decided to stop riding, the concussion signs and symptoms she experienced, and the treatment method that Dr. Ned established that allows her to get back to normalcy. Check it out. So today we'll start off by talking about how this whole issue of injury to your brain came about from this so important sport. Uh, so welcome, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, like any sport, risk comes with it. So I knew when I first started riding, like, you're going to fall off. Like, it's inevitable. Like, sometimes you fall, sometimes it's not bad. In my cases, I had a few falls that were very bad. Um, there was one where I remember like hitting, I fell off and I hit like the wall. And then I remember like laying on the ground and then waking up like in the hospital because I lost conscious for a long time. Um, then there were some where I fell off and it's sort of like when you like, get down you always get back up so I was always told if less like you can't walk like you get back on the horse so there was one the I think the horse like reared up ended up flipping over so I hit my head pretty hard but like I got up I was fine and my trainer was like okay like go get on another horse so I remember like trying to like get on another horse like struggled through that and then I had to drive 45 minutes home so like and it was dark with the lights coming on that was a struggle so when I when we met, uh, you were in quite a bit of distress, as you can recall. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you had seen lots and lots of physicians, mm -hmm. been on various treatments, both mm -hmm. therapy and medications. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long after uh, your last injury did you start seeing me? Um, I think it was a while because. It took me a long time to see a doctor to begin with because I did the whole, you're fine, you're fine, nothing's wrong with you, like just take some motion, it's fine. But then I got to the point where I was like, okay, this is not fine, like I can't like keep doing this. And so I saw a doctor and I'm sure he's a great doctor, um, but it just, it just never really like matched, like his treatment just like didn't help, like the medication, the dosages, whatever. Um, so then I was like, okay, he didn't work out. Let me just, like, I'm fine. Like, it's, I'll go back to being, like, not okay. Like, I already knew what it was like. I could do it again. But then I got to the point where I was like, okay, I can't, like, keep going with it. So then I found, I found you. So at that time, you were having trouble with your socialization with your friends, mm -hmm. uh, trouble in school, working. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about those experiences, what you went through. Uh, during this period of your life? It was just like, I didn't want to be around a lot of people because I knew like something my head would bother me or like I was just like, like moody maybe. Like I'd rather like be somewhere else. It was hard to focus, like to stay in front of my computer and do my job. Like I'd be like, oh, I'd rather be doing this. I'd rather be doing that. Like thinking a million different things other than the work that I actually needed to get done. So it was like, like the migraines that we talked about, but also like so many other like different things that I felt like I was going through. In, in terms of when, when I saw you, part of what I do with my patients is try to organize the facts about your condition. Mm -hmm. And it took us a long time. That first <laughs> visit must have been two hours, right? Yeah, I remember that it was long. Long visit. And we had to go over in gory detail all the experiences that you had to have documented. Yeah. And this is the method we basically use. It's simple, yeah. but yet uh, important to organize what came first, what came second, how we yeah. classify the condition. And the best method is about how we classify brain injury in order to effectively treat it. And part of the challenge we have in our industry is that many clinicians fail to properly classify the experiences in a manner that you could go ahead and treat them. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk to you about uh, a few things related to this classification. One is your physical signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. The other is what we call your cognitive signs and symptoms. And the third would be your, what we call your neurobehavioral signs and symptoms. I will define those as we go along, 
and we'll put them in context. Okay. So first, uh, on the hierarchy of things, in terms of the, the Beth method, we use the physical symptoms that you experience as the highest priority, because that's the most that is the most disabling part of your symptoms. Mm -hmm. So first, in talking about the physical symptoms, you will experience at the time some body cycle problems. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that, your body, your brain, and your body was not in sync. Mm -hmm. Right. So tell us about your sleep wake issues and and your energy issues that you you just couldn't cycle your body in an yeah. organized way. Oh, I, I could not sleep. There'd be nights where I would just lay in bed and I'd just be laying there and laying there and laying there. Just like, since I'm up laying there, I'm thinking of other things than that. Like I didn't sleep at all. Or then I'm like, okay, I'm up. I might as well like do something. So sometimes at like three in the morning, I would randomly like clean my apartment because I there was nothing that I could do that would help me fall asleep. <clears throat> so another one was your energy. At particular times of the day, you, you would tell me about your energy. Yeah, it's because of the no sleep. There was times where like I just hit like a wall, like a brick wall, and I just like had I had nothing in me. Like I would be like so tired. I was like, okay, like now it's middle of the day. Like I have to like keep trying to get things done. But just the lack of sleep like led to me having no energy and then like trickling down to no motivation. I know there are some other ones that we talked about and uh, one of the key ones was which we, you alluded to earlier was your the set of uh, signs and symptoms was the headaches that you had mm -hmm. and uh, we had a challenge when you came maybe you could talk a little bit of that about uh, the type of headaches you were having and and uh, what we had learned once we started getting down to the details. There would be sometimes I woke up and I was just like wow, like, this is horrible. Like, a couple of times, like, I would, like, throw up or, like, my eyesight was, like, whoa, like, because my head was just, like, pounding. So what was interesting about Sarah's headache and when we had this initial discussion, we were able to identify three different types of headaches. The first one was she had injury to two nerves in the front of her head, which we call the trigeminal nerve, and then she had two injuries to two nerves at the back of her head, which she didn't realize uh, during the, the, this all this time. And I remember touching the front of her head there above the eyebrow and she all but hit the seal. The headache was so intense. Same thing when we touched the back of her head. And so over the years, she had suffered injury to those nerves, which when we talk about how we treat them, we were able to effectively manage those headaches. That was the first step. And that was very disabling. Yeah. The second type was the pressure headaches, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us about that one. Um, well, like, I just felt like I had it just, like, constant. Like, it was just, like, always. Always like, there. Always yeah. there. Always like, where I would just sort of, like, be accustomed, I guess, to it just, like, being there. Right. And then the third headache was the really bad one, which was the migraines. Yeah. And so about that one. <laughs> They were when you would vomit and yep. dizzy and so forth and so forth. Horrible. Yeah. So added to that, you had another major problem, and that was the vertigo, which is the spinning sensation and the dizziness, um, which, again, tell us about that experience. Spinning, like I went for a run one time, and like the sidewalk was a little uneven, so I like tripped a little bit, but I was like, whoa, like this is like. Maybe Dr. Ned like was onto something when he was talking about that because I never like experienced it like like that. Then I was like, okay, yep, this is definitely what Dr. Ned meant by that. So those are some of your physical symptoms, right? <laughs> yeah. Now let's talk about your what we call as neurocognitive or cognitive symptoms. That's another way of classifying this. And of course, at one point you were a student, and the other point you were working. You work now for the sports team at the University of Miami. Mm -hmm. And um, in those two settings, you had experienced some challenges getting through, uh, getting your work done and so forth. Uh, so give us some understanding of how the these cognitive impairments that you had uh, affected you. I think as a student, like, it was definitely hard, like, going, like, back to high school too. Like, I just never, like, Sitting in class and just like taking notes and listening was just like 
like rough like it was hard so I'd be sitting there like trying to take notes but then like I'd be the one like the pencils like tapping I'm looking at the clock looking at my friend like doing like everything other than what like the teacher is like trying to teach so then going home to study and do homework even harder when there was like so much going on at home too I think with work I was like okay this is like serious like I'm getting paid to do this like I have to like really like pull it together like try my best and like stay as focused as I can stay as motivated as I can just because like they I am getting paid and like benefits and everything so I'm like I have to like give this my all um but then again sometimes the motivation would just be like I'd be trying to do one thing then I'd be like oh like completely thinking about something else and then I'd be like oh okay time to do no but my mind went like somewhere so a lot of trouble with easy you got distracted paying yes. attention focusing mm -hmm. you had some trouble with memory yeah um, and actually your attention problems were were, pre, were worse than your memory problems when we talked about that and, yeah uh, which is commonly seen in people with injuries to the brain yeah so those were the real challenges with what we will call the neurocognitive yeah okay so now we go to the last one and what we call the neurobehavioral symptoms and that is the emotional part of how the physical symptoms and the cognitive symptoms, signs and symptoms affected you. So uh, the, the one thing that struck out to me was this whole issue of uh, feeling anxious when you couldn't sleep. That, that was, that was stole the cake for me when you told me how going to sleep when nightfall came, what it meant to you. So, Again, I'd love to hear you tell us about uh, what it took for you to experience nightfall. Well, it's like when you go into the night already knowing that you're not going to sleep, like it just like does something to you. It was just like hard knowing that I wasn't going to sleep, which then like made me anxious and then it, like which led to like me really not being able to sleep because the anxiety of like that got into the way. So it's like a vicious circle. It is a vicious cycle, yeah. yeah. And of course the racing thoughts. Yes. You couldn't shut the brain down during the night. No. Right? And uh, how you give up something you love, even when it's not so good for you. <laughs> it was really tough. I remember one of the first couple of appointments we were talking and you were like, Sarah, you should not be riding. Like you can't risk hitting your head again. And I was like, I've been doing this I think I saw you first when I was like 25. I've been riding since I was like in like pre-K. So it's like when you do something for that long, it's so hard to give up. So I was like, yeah, okay, okay, whatever. I continued to ride again. I think you knew that. And then I fell off again. I was like, oh, maybe he had something to like, like he really meant what he was saying. We were like, Sarah, like you really can't do this. Like the next fall, like, you're going to be in trouble because I remember there was a what if and it's like what if I fall and don't hit my head like what if I never fall off again there's so many like what ifs too and you're like it's a risk that like you can't you can't take so then I stopped and it was hard it's hard there was a lot of tears shed but um I knew you telling me multiple times that I had to stop that like I had I had to stop yes well you know, you did much right for yourself. And, I, yeah. and, you know, we are grateful for the fact that you're here today and you, through some of the treatment methods that we've implemented, you have a different life now. So, you just heard all about Sarah's experience with multiple concussions. And I'm sure it even resonated with some of you guys. Next up in part two, Dr. Nye is going to focus entirely on the treatment method he used to help Sarah recover and be able to get balance back in her life. Stay tuned.